we had come through Minnesota for a vacation and uh, I'd been doing some praying. I'd you know, recently come to my you know spirituality and my awakening maybe a couple years ago and um, you know I had a call and I had a call to come up north and, and come to the camps and I didn't know which camp I didn't know what to do I just knew I had to show up so I told my, my family you know I'll be back and I, I just went up there and got in touch with some people and uh, went to the camp and once I was there I, you know I knew I was supposed to be there and, and I had, had an amazing time but I saw a lot of the struggle and the fight and the people that have been sacrificing for some of them eight months you know and, and they needed more help they needed more people and unfortunately, I can't be in the front line, so um, you know, I had to go home, go back to my business, and I realized I need to do something. And then that's when I kind of, after praying and meditating, it came to me that uh, you know, I got, uh, um, when I did the bridge collapse, um, you know, George Bush gave us uh, challenge coins, and he directed the Secretary of Defense to give us an award. Um, so we got, I got a joint commendation medal from that. And then the Governor Tim Pawlenty at the time from Minnesota, he gave me uh, a medal of commendation, as well as a letter of commendation uh, for my efforts at the bridge collapse. And so I felt uh, this is my, my best effort to try to raise my voice for the politicians actually here because they don't seem to listen to uh, our constituents anymore. I learned that being a, a Bernie delegate, maybe we'll talk about later, but, uh, and so I made some calls, talked to some news people and said, taught me how to put together a press kit, how to put together a, a media alert and started putting that stuff together and uh, made some other phone calls. And I, you know, probably about a week's time, I was flying out here, um, set up a, a an action on the Stone Arch Bridge and uh, you know, had that planned for 6 p.m. and basically went around to the governor's office and gave my medals back um, and, and gave him a three page letter, um, a heartfelt letter, you know, of, of why they need to listen and why we need to learn the lessons from Flint, Michigan um, and, and make sure we don't, you know, repeat their mistakes. And, uh, you know, also dropped the letter off at, uh, at the Attorney General Keith Ellison's office, which uh, he later called me back the next day and gave me his phone number to keep open line of communication. And uh, we weren't able to drop them off at the Supreme Court because uh, they're not allowed to accept such letters. But um, I'm now working with uh, some of the attorneys. We're, we're going to try to write what's called an, uh, an amicus, amicus brief or whatever um, to basically try to submit this as a, you know, on the formal record as well as some other compelling evidence to try to get the Supreme Court to take up this case. Because if, if they don't take up the case, um, you know, you know, it's looking really bad. But you know, they have, they're the law of the land, and I believe that you know the court case. If you look back, you know, without getting into all the details, it was just a, a wrong administration, bad venue, which means bad judges, you know, during the Trump administration. I think, you know, once it gets into the right court, um, the Supreme Court, and they actually take up the case, um, I'm confident it's going to be overturned, at the very least, uh, remanded back to the lower court. Um, but so that's what helped me, you know, so I did this action and, um, you know, you know, work with a lot of the indigenous folks and trying to support the front line. Um, you, know, you know, the real fighters in the front line, those sacrificing, not showering, um, you know, and beautiful showers, going out to nice to eat and stuff like that. Um, spending time in their own bed at home with their families. You know, this is the least I could do is then spend my time, come up here and thank them for what they're doing. Let them know that, you know, you know what they're doing is really, really important. And, uh, you know, I'd served in the military for a long time. And uh, I'll tell you the character of some of these, these frontline workers, you know, challenges a good majority of those I've served with over in combat. So sorry, that's a long story. I'll try to make the next yeah, one shorter. How's okay. that? 